side, this is your thumb side, and then this side, this is your knuckle side, okay? So wherever I make you run, you run, but it'll be only seven points. You ready? Go. Bounce, got bounce. So I call this bump and run, and this is the first activity I do with any child because it tells me an awful lot. Okay, first thing what I did is I tricked them into taking a continental grip, and I want the, the child their first grip to be their continental grip. Okay, because most of what they're going to be doing is projected in a vertical plane, and with a continental grip, I can know that I don't have to break the wrist. If I have any other kind of grip, I've got to break my wrist a little bit to make the ball go vertically. So that grip right there, plus it sets the foundation for all of the slice skills and everything else, one-handed volleys, whatever. So that's my first grip, okay? They don't, they get in top spin pretty quick, so I'll show you what that grip's going to be in a moment. So this is bump and run, and then it turns in to make the coach run, because they have more fun doing this. So we would do it in a space, but now you don't have to just bump it to me, you can run a little bit too. The kids love it, so here we go. <laughs> okay, so, and the idea that we're running around smiling, chasing the ball, and obviously we're very demonstrative, right? As coaches, we get out there, we make these unbelievable lunges for the kids, we do rolls, we do everything, make the kid, you know, giggle and laugh, and they're having a great time. But it's all with the idea of, does the kid move well? Does he perceive? Does he or she set up, stop? Do they use their legs to stop? Do they step out sometimes on the outside foot? What does their feet do? Are they able to perceive? Can they control a racket hand? It's a big story is told with that exercise. So let's say now I've worked with, with, with Bill. Let's say it's a private setting. For instance, he's six years old, seven years old. And uh, a couple classes later, okay, after we've been doing our basic uh, little rally stuff, so sure, we would have done this, right? We would have rallied where I lift the ball a little bit. I have him bumping, and we, we move, so we're over in net, and we're doing all that stuff that you all do. But I don't stay with that very long. Now if I'm going to teach them my touch in their forehand, watch what I'm going to do. So put your racket down like that. And just pick it up. Like that. Okay, so that's all. That's now his forehand grip forever, okay? It's going to be approximately semi-western. I didn't teach him with thumbs and all that movement of his hand. Just have him pick it up. And is it the same for every child? No, it's slightly different, but that's okay too. So, but that's their grip. What it does, it creates, well, it's all a stroking angle between the forearm and the shaft of the racket. So the racket's not like that. Okay. In my Connell grip, it was like that. But when I use my pick up my racket grip, which creates a semi western, it allows me then to produce top spin and to do other things with it. So the child, in, in my take, has uh, Connell grips and semi western. They don't do a lot of Eastern except when we do the Del Potro forehands and stuff like that. So I use players with different grips, and the kids play with all these different grips. Lahari, that little nine year old girl, she has all the grips. She can hit with an Eastern grip flat, she can hit with a Connell grip flat, she can hit with a semi-western grip flat, but I don't take it to a full western grip to hit flat. She can, either, she can hit top spin with all of those grips. So she finds her own grip and over time she'll be happy with it. So anyway, let's say that so we've we taught the grip, okay? Now, in swing shape, this is what we do. The kids starting at age six and seven, they start to learn to do this from a ready position, okay? They learn to move to the side and get up in an open stance. They learn to step in in a square stance. They learn to move back over hitting off the back foot. They learn all this stuff. Right now, this is all up the river. So the kids will, will go over to the side. Okay, they start with a shoulder turn. So you can see the racket's above the hand. Meet the OT parameters. The hand is below the shoulder. It's not above the shoulder. Okay, so the movement is made. So let's say it's an open stance. Kids load up on the outside foot. Now this is all holding the trigger. You notice that the palm is back towards that corner. So what's going to happen is the leg's going to be involved. This hand is going to control so the body's going to open. They're going to hit, and then the racket comes across. Where the racket finishes is just no consequence. Okay, it can finish down there, it can finish there, it can finish there. It's not really a consequence very much. It's just the path of the racket will dictate the finish. So once the racket goes across, then the, the cross over and they come back and stick. They move. There's a little hop on the outside foot and come back. So they learn via these swing shapes to have different types of strokes. None of the kids have the same stroke, but they all have rhythm. None of them take their hands up above their heads. Their hands are brought back in certain parameters, certain heights. The racket uh, goes to a certain position. We don't want the kids, even though you'll notice squinting, that photo was taken. Pretty, we see later, I'll show you in a minute. His hand is not full western, 
So right now, so you see his racket back there? So if I'm hitting there, I don't really want my racket to get to there. I want it more like this. But I don't really want the hand to go past the, uh, the shoulder in that line. I want the hand to stay here, and then the motions come from there. So, so we do these swing shapes. That's called up the river. The kids have to do uh, like six forehands by the time they get to the net. Okay? So they run up. So let's say it's open stance. So they're doing, and maybe next time they come up and they'll do it with a square stance. So they step in and so they jump, cross over and go. So they move up. Then they circle their arms, they come back and they go over to that side, and they're doing a backhand. So on the backhand, with the kids, again, real boys, everybody, we have our continental grip base. We put the other hand on, and that's basically their, their two-handed grip. So the kids now, again, they'll do a shoulder turn. Notice the racket's above the hands. The hands are below the shoulders. They're not above the shoulders. They're there. The kids move. The kids learn both a square stance or a seven square stance where the hands are still high. Then they pull the trigger, meaning the trigger, the hand slides down, and then there's a whip. So from there and now, the action that comes with the racket, I'll show you later how it keeps the and until the racket comes up. But that drive will bring this puck through, and there's a crossover and go. So, back. There's that little jump, and they come across. Open stance, we have the kids right away at age six or seven, they learn to do this. They learn to load up on that outside foot, do that with that little jump, and come back. So the kids actually learn an open stance backhand as well. But it's just done in shadow. If you grew up in Moscow, you may have, if you went to certain specific clubs, you may have spent 150 hours of shadow swinging even before you hit a tennis ball. So there are some parts of the world that do a lot more. I just advocate, and this really comes from Wayne Elderton, who is the director of tennis at the Grant Connell Tennis Center up in North Vancouver in British Columbia. And uh, Wayne did our situational training program for us. And I watched the amount of detail that he was able to teach through swing shapes. That's a pretty good kind of thing. So it's not so different than the routines on a piano. Of course, the practice, the scales and all that that you might do. Just about anything in life you do sort of practice things. So, but if I did this for 15 minutes, the kids, I'd lose it. But if I do three or four different ones for a minute each, don't lose them at all. They kind of just